Hello, everyone. I'm Li Fan Wu from UC San Diego. I'm going to present our paper, Analytic Spherical Harmonic Gradients for Real-Time Rendering with Many Polygonal Area Lights. Pre-computed radiance transfer is a classic technique in real-time rendering. The goal is to efficiently solve the reflection equation, which is formulated as a double product integral of the incoming lighting and the transport function. By projecting both functions onto a set of spherical harmonic basis functions, the double product integral can be simply rewritten as a dot product of the SH coefficients. To support near field area lighting, we need to compute the spherical harmonic projection of a uniform area light at every shading point. It requires integrating SH basis functions over the area light, which leads to spatially varying SH lighting coefficients. In prior works, an analytic formula for SH coefficients has been derived. The state-of-the-art method by Wang and Ramon Mosi uses an efficient recurrent formula, allowing real-time rendering in PRT with a few area lights. A major limitation is that the time complexity is linear in the number of area lights. For each shading point, accumulating the contributions from whole lights requires enumerating over all of them. For example, rendering this scene with more than 700 lights takes about two minutes using the previous method. In this work, we present a novel method that can scale PRT to hundreds of area lights within real time. Our method builds on an important theoretical contribution analytic spherical harmonic gradients. We derive an analytic formula for spherical harmonic gradients, which are the first order partial derivatives with respect to the spatial location of the shading point x. Given this new theory, we demonstrate a practical algorithm that can effectively evaluate SH lighting coefficients at all the shading points. We first compute SH coefficients and gradients on a sparse 3D grid. It is much faster because the number of grid points is much smaller than the number of shading points, allowing us to handle many area lights. Then, for any intermediate shading points, we can interpolate its SH lighting coefficients from the eight nearest grid points using an accurate tricubic Hermit interpolation. This is independent of the number of lights. Let's first review some background knowledge. A frequently used concept in this work is the zonal harmonics a spatial subset of SH basis functions. They are radially symmetric around the z-axis. One important property is that any SH basis function can be rewritten as a linear combination of the rotated zonal harmonics. We use this factorization to replace the spherical harmonics by the rotated zonal harmonic basis functions, which can greatly simplify our derivation. In this work, our goal is to compute the first order derivatives of the SH coefficients. Reynolds transport theorem is a general theory for differentiating high dimensional integrals. In general, we cannot change the order of the differentiation operator and the integration operator. 
So the differentiation result on the right-hand side has two parts. The first term with the green color integrates the partial derivative of the original function f. We call it the interior term. The second term with the orange color is a boundary integral. We call it the boundary term. The integrand of the boundary term is the product of the original function and the dot product of the normal direction and the change rate of a point on the integration domain boundary. Next, I'm going to present our approach. Our method has two steps. The first step is computing SH coefficients and gradients on the 3D grid points. The second step is interpolating SH coefficients at other shading points inside the grid. We use an accurate tritubic Hermit interpolation leveraging the SH gradients. Let's start with the first step. We have already known how to compute SH coefficients analytically from prior works. Now, we need to further derive their first-order derivatives with respect to the shading point position. With our loss of generality, we focus on one of the partial derivatives. By applying the Reynolds transport theorem, it can be rewritten as the sum of the green interior term and the orange boundary term. We find that the interior term is equal to zero because the SH basis function is independent of the spatial location. So this term disappears and there remains only the boundary term. This term is a 1D integral integrating over the edges of a spherical polygon. By further simplification, we also find that the integrand is the product of polynomials and sine functions. This leads to an analytic solution. We have the derivation details in the paper. There are a few interesting connections to prior works that we want to discuss. First, let's see how our work is relating to the computation of analytic SH coefficients. Although we use the Reynolds transport theorem, a different technique for the derivation, part of our results can be reduced to the same integral CL. Note that our method requires both SH coefficients and gradients, and they share the same computation. This implies that we can compute them jointly with little extra effort. In addition, if we look back to the semi-analytic SH gradients paper in 2004, we can find that they were using a different parameterization. Their integration domain is on the area light source. This leads to a zero boundary term because the integration domain is static. So in that case, there remains the interior term, which is a 2D integral. It is more difficult to derive an analytic solution for this 2D integral. So computing it still requires numerical integration. In contrast, our parameterization results in a 1D boundary integral, which can be computed in closed form. Parameterization of the integration domain is critical for differentiation. Most physics-based differentiable rendering methods prefer to use a parameterization that can avoid the boundary term because evaluating the boundary integral requires an extra expensive edge sampling. In our case, 
we prefer to get rid of the interior term and reduce the formula to the boundary integral because it reduces the dimension of the integral to 1D. This significantly simplifies the derivation of the analytic formula. After computing SH coefficients and gradients on the grid points, next, let's see how to use Hermit interpolation for any intermediate shading point. We start with the 1D case. Given the values and first order derivatives at the endpoints, the cubic Hermit interpolation will find a cubic polynomial satisfying constraints at the endpoints. The gradient constraint can improve the, the interpolation accuracy. In this example, we compare different interpolation methods for computing a message coefficient. Two baseline methods are the traditional piecewise linear interpolation and the one based on the first order Taylor series expansion. We can see both curves deviate from the reference, while the black curve using the Hermit interpolation fits perfectly. We can further extend the 1D cubic Hermit interpolation to 3D. We perform the 1D interpolation along the three axes progressively. As illustrated in this figure, we first compute the four blue points G0 to G3, then compute the two red points H0 and H1, and finally compute the value Q at the desired location. We use Hermit interpolation for the SH coefficients, but we use trilinear interpolation for the SH gradients because we don't have the second order derivatives. In this example, we compare those three interpolation methods in real rendering. On the left, we show a pixel intensity plot along a scan line in the image. Only the Hermit curve perfectly match the reference. On the right, we provide error maps of the full image. The one using the Hermit interpolation has the lowest error. This concludes our method. Now let's see the results. We first validate the correctness of our analytic SH gradient formula. These images visualize SH gradient values within a 2D rectangular region. We compute the reference gradients by the numerical finite differences with a small step size of 0 0.001. Our analytic results agree with the reference values. Next, we show that our method scales well to multiple area lights. We use the first 81 SH basis functions in all the following experiments. The running time of the previous method increases linearly in the number of lights. In contrast, our method runs in only 11 milliseconds with 512 area lights, achieving real-time performance. Here we show the running time breakdown of our method. The time for grid evaluation is still increasing linearly, but it is short thanks to the small number of grid points. The time for Hermit interpolation is nearly constant, not depending on the number of lights. In this experiment, we compare the rendering performance and accuracy with increasing grid resolutions. We find that using a resolution of 8 cube provides good accuracy and small computational costs in most examples. 
when there exist high frequency variations of lighting, for example, in this scene, we have an area light inside the scene bounding box. A high resolution grid may be required. The shading close to the grazing angle of the area light looks blurry when the grid resolution is low. The quality improves as we increase the grid resolution. In this example, we show a real-time rendering of a room illuminated by two moving textured lights. We break down the texture lights into hundreds of triangular light sources, and each of them emits uniformly. Our method runs at 56 frames per second. Here we show another example featuring the glossy reflection under dynamic lighting conditions. In this example, we show a scene rendered by three textured lights. These textured lights are made up of 713 uniform area lights, and each of them is allowed to move independently. Even for this challenging case, we are able to render it at 36 frames per second. We believe our work can inspire many future research directions. Since spherical harmonics is widely used in computer graphics, we hope our analytic SH gradients can benefit more applications. We also seek to extend our derivation to non-uniform area lights, for example, spotlights with angularly varying emission. Finally, we would like to address the case of multiple area lights occluding each other. To summarize, we have derived an analytic formula for spherical harmonic gradients. Building on this new theoretical result, we develop an efficient algorithm for computing the SH coefficients and gradients and use an accurate Hermit interpolation. This enables real-time rendering of scenes with hundreds of area lights, which was intractable previously. We want to thank the reviewers for their constructive comments and Jingwen Wang for the insightful discussion. We also thank these funding agencies for supporting our work. Thank you for your attention.